Hi everyone, my name is Kimia Cardin, and today I will be talking to you guys about coccidemia, which is another word for tailbone pain. Coccidemia is inflammation of the tailbone or coccyx, which is which results in pain and tenderness at the tip of the tailbone between the buttocks. The tailbone or coccyx is back here, and pelvic floor muscles extend from pubic bone back to tailbone. So a lot of times overactivity of the pelvic floor muscles can result in pulling that tailbone into a more flex position, if this is my tailbone. Now, the tailbone can be in a flex position or it can be in more of an extended position resulting in pain to that area, as well as that bone can be hypermobile or hypomobile. Hypermobile meaning that it is moving around a little bit more than it should be. Hypomobile meaning that it's in a bit more of a rigid position. Now, the tailbone not only flex and extends, but it also deviates laterally as well as rotates. So if it's hypermobile, it can be deviating in all six of those directions. And that can contribute to pelvic floor muscle tension and thus pelvic pain as well. Now, tailbone dysfunction may be due to external or internal causes. External causes include a fall on the buttocks, prolonged sitting on hard or soft surfaces, while internal causes include vaginal childbirth because the tailbone often has to extend as the baby descends through the uterus and out of the vaginal canal to allow for space, which sometimes might even result in a fracture of the tailbone. Other internal causes of tailbone pain may be surgery, infectious disease, or overactivity of the pelvic floor muscles, like I said, which can cause those cause that tailbone to be in a more flexed position or even just exacerbate the pain or just cause sensitivity to the area. Now, you might be experiencing tailbone dysfunction if you notice that you are having pain during or after sitting for long periods of time, standing up after moving from a sitting position, if you, that tailbone is sensitive to the touch, or if you even have pain with bowel movements. So for this reason, obviously if you have tailbone pain, then that has a really severe impact on quality of life. Now, some people might, like I said, an external cause might be a fall on the buttocks. This can be a fall from years ago that has kind of over time um, resulted in even more pain. So that pain can be more chronic or the pain can be acute. Now, if you're having the pain then it's important to get into a pelvic floor therapist right away if possible to help address those symptoms so that they don't become chronic. Um, diagnosis is based on physical exam. So like I said, your pelvic floor therapist can determine if the uh, tailbone or pelvic floor muscle tightness or muscular imbalances or what is the cause of pain in that area. Or sometimes even um, there might be x-ray imaging done in some cases to determine if there is any hypermobility, hypomobility or flexed or extended position of the tailbone. And this is more common in females than males, like I said, because it could be due to childbirth, but also women are more susceptible to injury due to wider sit bones. But the good news is that 90% of cases can be managed with non-surgical treatments, including physical therapy, activity modification, and medication. Now, how pelvic floor therapy can help. So like I said, your pelvic floor therapist can perform a exam that can determine if your tailbone is in a flexed or extended position or if it's hyper or hypomobile, and they can determine adequate stretches to give you to downtrain the pelvic floor muscles if there is pelvic floor muscle overactivity, as well as diaphragmatic breathing, which is discussed in another video, um, which is able to activate the pelvic floor muscles to relax the pelvic floor and lengthen it. Now, some stretches that your pelvic floor therapist might give you to relax the pelvic floor muscles are a child's pose, which would be really separating the knees and extending your arms forward and feeling a stretch all the way through that low back into your bottom area. Holding for three sets of 30 seconds at least. As well as doing a happy baby pose on your back, where again, really feeling a stretch through that back side as you pull your knees into your chest and separate your knees. Now, other stretches that your pelvic floor therapist might give you are a piriformis stretch to get into those deep hip, hip um, rotator muscles, as well as a deep squat, like this. Um, other recommendations to mitigate pain in the tailbone, either while you're waiting to see your pelvic, until you're waiting to see your pelvic floor therapist, or while you are going to pelvic floor therapy, is to use 
ice or heat to mitigate that pain, as well as if you have a job that requires a lot of sitting or prolonged sitting, then you might want to think about using a standing desk to kind of break up throughout your day, how often you're sitting versus standing, as well as just taking adequate walking breaks every hour or two throughout your workday. So even if that means going and getting the mail one hour, going and filling up your glass of water another hour, just trying to think of things to do because that would be great to take a brain break for many reasons. Um, and standing desks are great and you can even add, um, you can get a, a desk that rises and lowers as well as even just getting one of those um, platforms to raise your monitor on it. And then other tips would be for when you are sitting to use a cushion. Sometimes a cushion might not be comfortable. So sometimes people like to get a cushion or a donut that has a hole so that your um, like a donut so that your tailbone isn't touching any surface. Or if you have a pillow that you would use on the airplane, like a neck pillow, you can even use one of those to because that has a hole in it. And lastly, you can foam roll or your pelvic floor therapist might want to address, like I said, tension in those other muscles besides pelvic floor muscles that connect to your tailbone area. So this can include your glute muscles, your low back muscles, and muscles around your sacrum. So while your pelvic floor must, while your pelvic floor therapist can do some manual therapy to release some of that tension, at home you can also use a foam roller to address some tension in those muscles as well by kind of finding those tight spots, sitting on them, waiting for them to release. Thanks, guys.